Welcome to another video in my Apollo Moonhawk series. Today, I want to talk once again about the F1 engines. I want to respond to some comments that uh, I found rather interesting. So I thought I would do that with this video before we move on to another subject. But first, I want to thank Bob Williams once again for the excellent work he's doing on my videos. He has recently just started posting an audio video version of my book and oh wow a lot of work has gone into what he is doing so please check it out if you can. Now some interesting comments have been raised about the F1 engines. Now for those of you that are tuning into this video for the first time I ask you to please check out in my Paula Moon Hulk series videos number five and six because I talk extensively about the F1 engines. I'm not going to go through all that here. So if you go through that, then you'll have a much better understanding of what I'm talking about in this video. Now I want to address specifically the minimal testing of the F1 engines. And some of the comments that have been made from the NASA proponents that the reason for the minimal testing is because of the enormous cost that would have been involved. Now, there is some truth to what they're saying, but somehow they're justifying safety for money, which I have never heard done before in any other industry. So that's a very interesting admission from the NASA proponents. Now, what they're also saying is, is that these are single use engines and what they mean by that is is when you launch a Saturn V rocket you've destroyed the F1 engines it's a one-time use so they can't be used again so their justification for the minimal testing is that they would have had to purchase new engines and that's true but what they need to do is is that they need to keep doing that it doesn't matter what the cost involved here is we're talking about the safety of astronauts you, you certainly wouldn't get away with that in aviation not that that actually happens because those engines are actually, you know, are, are reusable as everyone knows. However, the point is, is that yes, NASA would have had to pay the cost for those F1 engines each time they wanted to launch a Saturn V. But we're looking for consistency in terms of data and that is the benefit of doing testing of the F1 engines in the Saturn V and that's what I'm talking about in terms of finding at least some comparable testing to the static testing that was done. Now, the static testing that was done amounted to about 70 hours, which is, you know, fairly substantial. And I can understand the reasoning behind not being able to match that 70 hours in terms of testing F1 engines in actual flight conditions. That does make a lot of sense. But there is one interesting aspect to that, and I'd like to read a quote here. It's from the spacereview.com and it's by Dwayne A. David. And this is what he says, quote, the five engine cluster used on the Saturn V was fired at the Mississippi and Alabama test facility 34 times with full 18 full duration tests for a total of 15,534 seconds of engine experience. That part of the quote I want to read again here with 18 full duration tests for a total of 15,534 seconds of engine experience. Now, what he's talking about there is, is that they did a cluster of five F1 engine tests, which is basically simulating what you would actually have in a Saturn V rocket in the first stage, because each rocket had five F1 engines. And they did 18 full duration tests, which is just over two minutes each. So we're looking at about 36, 37 minutes of actual testing there. That is the number that NASA could have matched and it didn't. As we know, there was only two unmanned launches of the Saturn V for a total of four minutes combined for the use of the F1 engines before they send up the first manned mission. Now here's what's very interesting about that, the H1 engines. The H1 engines were basically the precursor to the F1 engines. It's basically the same engine, only a lot smaller and less powerful. Had the same regenerative cooling system. Now, what's interesting about the H1 engines, which was used in the Saturn rocket and the Saturn 1B, is that it had numerous testing, static testing, but it also had a comparable amount of testing in actual flight conditions. In fact, 
All you have to do is refer to any book on the Apollo missions. Here's one here, it's the Saturn 1B by Alan Laurie. And turn to listings of all each one engines right here. Page after page after page. And what these pages represent is not only the testing, the static testing, but how many times that engine was launched. So I have a question for the proponents. And I'd like you to blog your answer, post your comments on this video. How many launches did the H1 engine have before they put the first crew on board, which was Apollo 7, because it used the Saturn 1B? I want you to post your comments and I want you to justify why you're saying what you're saying about the H1 engines because you know what here's a hint they did a lot more testing of the H1 engines in practical conditions of flight than they did with the F1 engines so I'm interested to see your comments on that so anyway that's all for now and I'll see you in the next video bye for now